hello everyone so today we will be discussing another important topic of pharmacodynamics that is classification of receptors based on the signal transduction mechanism so basing on the signal transduction mechanism the receptors are divided into four different types so these four types are first is your ionotropic receptors second is the enzymatic receptor third is g protein coupled receptors and the fourth one is intracellular receptor so first and foremost coming to the ionotropic receptors so ionotropic receptors kya hote hain the ionized substances as we all know they cannot cross the membrane therefore for the movement of ions there is special type of gates and these gates are known as the ion channels okay this kind of channels are known as ion channels so these channels can be voltage gated ion channels or ligand gated ion channels to ye jo ligand gated ion channels hai inhi ko hum bolte hain ionotropic receptors so in this what happens the ligand is the drug when the drugs come and bind to this ion channel at the receptors this ion channels it opens and there is flow of the ions inside the cell or outside of the cell the receptor present on these gates are known as ionotropic receptors normally these gates are closed when the gate opens the ions move from a region of the higher concentration to a region of lower concentration so how will be that the movement of the ions it is from the region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration so sodium and calcium they are more outside the cell okay so when the gate opens they move inside of the cell whereas the potassium is present more inside of the cell so when the gate will open the ion will move out of the cell now another thing to remember in the ionotropic receptor is that these are the fastest acting receptor this is usually asked as a question which is the fastest acting receptor out of the all four now where are these located these are usually present in the brain and the major inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain is gaba then the stimulatory effect on the brain is by nmda receptor okay next coming to the nn type of receptors then nm type of receptors in the nerves next is your 5st3 receptor so these are all example of ionotropic receptors next coming to enzymatic receptors so this enzymatic receptors these have two ends one is the intracellular end and there is the extracellular end so this intracellular end the enzyme is present and in the extracellular end the drug binds to the receptor now binding of the drug the, that activates the receptor and which leads to the activation of the enzyme this enzyme that produces the action so without the en entering of the drug into the cell the drug can produce the action these includes the tyrosine kinase receptors and these are present also for the cytokines then hormones you can remember like pig prolactin insulin and growth hormone so this enzymatic receptors they can be divided into three types those which produces intrinsic cytokinase uh, sorry tyrosine kinase activity the enzymatic receptors are of three types the first with intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity second no tyrosine kinase activity but have a jack start protein and third is guanylate cyclase activity so first coming to the receptor with intrinsic 
tyrosine kinase activity so the receptor itself has an enzyme tyrosine kinase example of this receptor is insulin receptor second is no intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity to ye jo receptor hai isme kya hoga tyrosine kinase nahi hoga or the tyrosine kinase enzyme is not present on the receptor rather when the drug binds to the receptor outside the cell there is a protein which is known as jack start protein jack start protein so when the drug binds to the receptor outside the cell this jack start protein is activated inside the cell now these proteins they recruit the tyrosine kinase from the cytoplasm and this are present for cytokines the prolactin and growth hormone okay so now coming to the third type of enzymatic receptor which has got a guanylate cyclase activity so the drug binds outside and activate the enzyme guanylate cyclase present in the inside this enzyme increases the production of cyclic gmp so it produces the action by this and this is present for nitric oxide so this finishes your enzymatic receptors so in a short if we can again summarize this the enzymatic receptors this has got a intracellular domain and an extracellular end extracellular domain it is where the drug binds now when the drug binds what happens the receptor to get activated and it's this receptor activation causes activation of the enzyme then this enzyme causes the action okay so these include the tyrosine kinase receptors and where are they present these are present for cytokines the hormones like prolactin insulin and growth hormone now this enzymatic receptors are of three categories one which has got a intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity second which has the, which does not have a intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity and the third one that has a guanylate cyclase activity so the receptors having tyrosine uh, tyrosine kinase activity are example is insulin now without tyrosine kinase activity or no intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity it activates a protein the drug binds to the receptor and it activates a protein that protein is known as jack start protein this jack start protein is activated inside the cell this jack start protein what it does it recruits the tyrosine kinase from the uh, from the cytoplasm and these kind of receptors are present for the cytokines the prolactin and growth hormone now the ones with guanylate cyclase activity the receptors with guanylate cyclase activity they activate the enzyme guanylate cyclase present on the inside this activation of the enzyme causes increased production of cyclic gmp now once the cyclic gmp increases there is action of the drug now these are present for nitric oxide now coming to the third kind of receptors that is the g protein coupled receptor most of the drugs they act through the g protein coupled receptors or what is the other name of the g protein coupled receptors these are known as metabotropic receptors metabotropic receptors okay they comprise of a single alpha helical peptide now this single alpha helical peptide it has seven transmembrane spanning regions okay the extracellular domain of this receptor usually contains the ligand binding area domain it has got the ligand binding area intracellularly these receptors they have they are being linked to the g protein now this g protein gs gi and others are there gs gi and others so extracellularly it has got the ligand binding domain intracellularly it is linked to the g protein and there are seven transmembrane spanning regions okay so this g protein has got three subunits what are those subunits alpha beta and gamma so alpha subunit is there and beta gamma subunit is there 
so binding of the appropriate ligand to the extracellular domain activates the g protein okay whenever the ligand binds to the extracellular domain there is activation of the g protein ligand binds to extracellular domain there will be activation of g protein now once this g protein get activated what happens gtp replacement with gdp takes place on the alpha subunit okay now the dissociation of the g protein occurs so when the dissociation of the g protein occurs there will be one alpha gtp subunit and the other beta gamma subunit okay so when the activation of the g protein takes place there is replacement of the gdp with gtp now when the gtp replacement takes place this alpha beta gamma subunit these are again divided so there is one alpha gtp subunit and another beta gamma subunit takes place now this subunit they interact with the intracellular effectors these effectors are usually enzyme protein or ion channels okay these effectors then they usually activate the second messengers these second messengers they form the action within the cell after the action is there the intrinsic gtpase activity of the alpha subunit results in joining with the beta gamma subunits and thus g protein is again available for the action after the action takes place there is the gtpase activity of the alpha subunit this results in the joining of the joining with the beta gamma subunit then the gt g protein is again available for action okay so gpcr is of three main types one is the gs gq and gi so gs it stimulates the adenylate cyclase this stimulation causes an increase in the cyclic amp the gi it inhibits the adenylate cyclase that results in the decrease of the cyclic amp now the gq it activate the phosphatidyl inositol phosphate pip2 to inositol triphosphate and diacyl glycerol this ip3 will increase the calcium okay so what are the second messengers and which one is the third messenger the second messengers are CAMP that is cyclic AMP IP3 and DAG these three act as the second messenger 
third messenger is calcium now the calcium can act both as second and third messenger okay so this was all about the g protein coupled receptor most of the drugs they act through this g protein coupled receptor also known as metabotropic receptors now coming to the fourth kind of receptor that is the intracellular receptors so these receptors as the name indicates these are present inside the cell so the drug must cross the cell membrane and enter into the cell to bind to the receptor so to cross this cell membrane the drug needs to be lipid soluble so only lipid soluble drugs they can work on these kind of receptors only lipid soluble drugs they work on these kinds of receptors now these receptors are of two kinds one is the cytoplasmic receptor and is second is the nuclear receptor okay intracellularly there can be two kinds of receptor cytoplasmic receptor and another is the nuclear receptor so what are the examples of cytoplasmic receptors the corticosteroids the glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoids second is the vitamin d okay then nuclear receptors these are the sex hormones like the estrogen progesterone testosterone okay then vitamin a then thyroid hormones like t3 and t4 these are all the nuclear receptors now the intracellular receptors these are the slowest acting receptors and this is a mcq which is the slowest acting receptor intracellular receptors or for that nuclear receptors and the which is the fastest acting receptor it is the ionotropic receptors okay so the receptor based on the signal transduction mechanisms to summarize they are of four types ionotropic receptors the enzymatic receptors the g protein coupled receptors and intracellular receptors ionotropic receptors these are also known as ligand gated ion channels whenever the drug comes and bind to the receptors an ion channel open up and the ions cross from uh, cross either inside the cell or from the inside to the outside based on the concentration so sodium and calcium they have a concentration higher outside the cell therefore they cross to the inside of the cell and when the potassium channels are activated these potassium they have a concentration more in the inside of the cell so they come to the outside of the cell these ionotropic receptors these are the fastest acting receptors next coming to the examples of the ionotropic receptors nnn mn uh, nm receptors 5st3 receptor gaba receptors nmda receptors coming to the enzymatic receptors these have got two parts one is the extracellular end and the intracellular end the extracellular end the drug binds and activates the receptor there is the intracellular end which contains the enzymes and this enzyme is responsible for the action so this tyrosine kinase receptors are an example of enzymatic receptors so apart from that the other kinds of receptors like cytokine receptor hormone receptors like the prolactin the insulin and the growth hormone so these are of three categories tyrosine kinase activity having no tyrosine kinase activity or the dextrate protein activity then with glomerulonate cyclase activity so the example of tyrosine kinase activity is the insulin receptors the that with dextrate protein activity is cytokines prolactin and growth hormone and thus glomerulonate cyclase activity is nitric oxide third kind of receptors are your g protein coupled receptors or metabotropic receptors these com comprise of single alpha helical peptide there are seven transmembrane spanning regions of this alpha helical peptide and there is two domains one is the extracellular domain that is the ligand binding area and there is a intracellular domain which is linked to the g protein that can be either gs gi or others these g protein has got three subunits that is the alpha subunit and the other two subunit they are linked together that is known as beta gamma subunit whenever the ligand binds to the extracellular domain there is activation of the g protein now whenever the g protein gets activated the gtp replaces the gdp and when this gtp replaces the gdp on the alpha subunit there forms two kinds of subunit one is the active component that is the alpha gtp subunit and the beta gamma subunit 
these alpha gtps of unit they interact with the cellular effectors and these cellular effectors can be enzymes proteins or ion channels and there is second messengers are there these second messengers they cause the action after the action takes place there is a intrinsic gtps activity inside this alpha subunit and due to this gtps activity the beta gamma subunit joins back and the g protein is again available for the action so the g proteins are of three categories g protein coupled receptors are of three categories gs gi and gq so when it is coupled to gs it stimulates the adenylate cyclase and there is increase in the cyclic mp gi inhibits the adenylate cyclase and there is decrease in the cmp and gq it activates the phosphatidyl inositol phosphate to ip3 and dag now this ip3 it causes increase in the calcium so what are the second messengers the second messengers are cyclic amp ip3 and dag and calcium is the second as well as the third messenger the fourth category of receptors are the intracellular receptors so as the name suggests these cell receptors are located inside of the cell and for a drug to act inside the cell the drug has to cross the cell membrane and for a drug to cross the cell membrane and to enter inside of the of the cell this drug has to be lipid soluble so only lipid soluble drugs works on this kind of receptors and this intracellular receptors are of two categories one is cytoplasmic receptors that is the examples are corticosteroids like the glucocorticoid mineralocorticoid and vitamin d the nuclear receptors like the sex hormones vitamin a and t3 and t4 and another important thing is that these receptors are the slowest acting receptors this was all about the types of receptor based on the signal transduction mechanism and this thing is in a very short uh, way it has been explained only for the purpose of the exam and uh, mcqs point of view thank you